Well, this is the seventh launch of the History Moment series that we started back in 2009. The History Moments are two-minute, highly researched, highly produced historical vignettes on the history drawn from the rich past of Eastern Ontario. Started the series back in 2009 with just a few 10 short stories. We're back today, our seventh season, with another 10 stories drawn from the past and cover a wide range of things. Some of it is war history. We also have a memorial piece this year to the late Grant Howes, who's the founder of the County Cider Company. And a wonderful story that I've wanted to do for years, which is about Jenny Crichton. She was a young woman who, as a teenager, went to Watertown to take a dressmaking dress course. She ended up meeting a young druggist whose name was Frank Woolworth, and together they established the Woolworth chain of five and dime stories. They became fabulously wealthy and a huge American retailing success. In the first years of Loyalist settlement in Prince Edward County, starvation was widespread. The months of 1787 and 1788 are still remembered as the hungry year. The annual British supply ships didn't show up, and a poor harvest and shortage of game meant widespread famine. Learning to live off the land and to produce products like maple syrup, skills learned from their First Nations neighbors, meant the difference between life and death. First Nations were the first to make the startling discovery that liquid from a tree could become a sweet elixir. Hot rocks dropped into the sap, formed steam, and heated the liquid until it became a sweet-tasting amber syrup boiled into maple sugar granule. Maple sugar soon became a mainstay of pioneer life. It was not only a critical foodstuff harvested in late winter, it was also a sweet that replaced sugar, a product hard to come by in the wilds of British North America. Sugar was also associated with the cane sugar industry, an industry built upon the slave trade which many loyalists abhorred. Harvesting maple syrup was intense and required the whole family to participate. It takes 40 gallons of sap to produce just one gallon of maple syrup, Records show that Prince Edward County crops in 1852 included over 120,000 pounds of the product. Today, there are over 2,700 maple syrup producers in Ontario, producing close to 4 million litres of syrup annually, a crop that was worth $32.5 million in 2011. Many families in Prince Edward and Hastings counties continue the tradition of sugaring off and welcome visitors to sample this sweet crop during festivals celebrating the arrival of spring. Well, the, the story, as I was explaining today, has kind of an organic uh, past in the sense that I, one of the things that I did when I came back to my hometown in 2000 was get involved with the restoration effort at a local cemetery, the Glenwood Cemetery in Picton. Wonderful, spectacular Victorian cemetery that opened up in the 1880s. Uh, but it needed a lot of work, and so one of the ideas that came forward was, well, to engage the community and to help with fundraising, why don't we try to, stel to tell stories from the cemetery about people who are buried there? And we have a couple of very prominent Canadians, Letitia Humans of Coburg, who was a school teacher, who became the founder of the Christians Women's Temperance Movement in Canada, and also Wellington Boulder, who's the father of the canning industry in Canada. So there are a wealth of stories there. We teamed up with the region to say, if we produce the series, would you play it before movies? Uh, and they have ever since 2009. So everybody in Prince Edward County knows about the history moments. Well, one of the stories that we did was the story of Molly Brandt, who was a Mohawk Indian leader. She lived during the time of the American Revolution. Um, there, sometimes stories are hard to do because there are no pictures of her. She lived before she predated photography, and there were no sketches or drawings of her. So it's very difficult to do a story about somebody who's faceless, really. But nonetheless, we were able to access a Canada Post stamp produced in 1986, which was a likeness of her based upon some of her uh, portrait sittings by relatives of her. Plus there's a bust of her, a, a bronze bust in, uh, on a piece of property in Kingston where she lived. So we started to piece together the story. And again, I just admire people so much like this who were larger than life. It's all the more remarkable that she was a person of First Nations ancestry who rose to become so significant, but also a woman at that time. 
and she was significant because she held the, the British alliance together with her people over that critical time period during the American Revolution and then after the War of 1812. The, if people would like to purchase a copy of the series, it's available from several bookstores uh, like Books and Company in Picton. It's also available from the Regent Theatre. In Balbo, you can get it through the Quinty Arts Council on uh, Bridge Street, I think it is, in downtown Balbo.